All right, so I'm doing the uh, fusing and metering of my battery bank. Uh, this is the fusing and metering portion of it, where I'm going to uh, put in some necessary fuses and I'm going to put in this little. I have a uh, gauge in there now. It's a meter, you know, measures uh, amps and volts and amp hours and whatnot. But uh, I don't really like it that much. The display is really small, and uh, so I get this Alili or Q work. Um, I think they're the same thing. Uh, battery monitor here. And I'm going to be installing that. Probably going to install it right next to the inverter right there. And for that, I got to get my hole saw out. And uh, we'll cut a hole right there. See if we can get that installed. All right. So, the hole saw here. I'm going to go right about, right about there. There's a screw right there, so I'm going to go a little higher. Up there. <laughs> this is going to go here, I think. Might have to clean this hole out a little bit more because I think it's the hole's a little small. But we'll see. Yeah. The hole's just a little bit too small. So take my Dremel and uh, see if I can widen that up a little bit. Now I'm using grid power to do this. Uh, I, I could certainly use this generator to do it. <coughs> except that uh, when I install the meter, it has to be at uh, full capacity, so I don't want to drain anything off my battery uh, right now. So I'm just going to use the uh, grid power for this. And it'll Alright, so uh, I got the hole cut out and the um, unit installed. Uh, can I just say that uh, better off getting a uh, hole saw that is the right size for the uh, hole. It would just be so much easier. So it's not going anywhere, but I'm going to put this bracket on there anyway. Just so that. Just a little bracket that keeps tension against the back of the gauge. All right, so the uh, shunt or the battery sampler is supposed to go on the negative side of the battery here. So what I've done is, since I didn't want to drill out my battery terminal because this has to fit on there, I. Uh, drilled out a one of these cables I think it's two gauge that I bought and I'm just gonna kind of take this off of the battery here so put this back up again put this sampler or shunt uh, for this I'm probably gonna zip tie it somewhere what I don't want is to have it come in contact with any anything on the box so if you can see that it's actually out of the frame but uh, let me zoom this out Hook that uh, sampler or sh shunt onto the uh, negative battery side terminal. Um, had to do it that way because of the bolt that went through the shunt. It does not match up to the lugs on my battery. 
So I had to drill out one of these cables rather than drill. Alright, so I'm pretty much uh, finished installing this LED meter, or Q Work uh, meter that I bought off of Amazon for around 40 bucks. I really like it. Um, I'll show you why. You can see it flashing there that shows that uh, it's on shore power or actually solar power. It's showing that uh, it's charging it blinks, which is kind of cool. But I decided to mount my shunt or my sampler, they call it, uh, here onto my panel on the front of it. Um, before I did that, I attached this small wire here, which goes to the battery. It's a really small wire, plugs right into that uh, green receptacle there. It goes over to my positive battery terminal. Uh, it doesn't take much to power this, um, so it requires a really small wire, and that screws into that green receptacle there. Um, provides power to it, and so from the sampler or the shunt, you want to go uh, the B side of the shunt over to your negative battery terminal. There's a big two gauge piece of uh, wire for that. And I had to do that actually because the uh, the bolts on the sampler of the shunt would not go through my battery terminals. The battery terminals are smaller than those bolts. So um, I had to actually drill out a bigger hole into the cable here, into the um, connector. So that I could get that through there. And so I just mounted it here on my front of my panel. So that goes to the battery. And then everything on this side is going to be whatever's coming in or, or going out of the battery. So you've got uh, this wire from the solar panel. I just clipped it onto the little screw there on that B side. I mean on that uh, P side of the uh, shunt or sampler. It goes on this side. Everything you plug into it goes on this side. And this is the uh, inverter cable right here. It goes back down, loops back down around to the bottom of my inverter. And uh, of course, the other side of the inverter goes to the positive on the other side of my battery terminal. So that goes actually from there. Follow it over to this side of the terminal so it draws equally from all four batteries. Yeah, so the last part of the uh, connection for the meter comes from the middle of the shunt here. It's a plug. It actually came with an extension cord uh, with this meter package. I didn't need all that wire, but I just zip tied it down here. So the, uh, the extension just plugs into the receptacle from the back of the meter and then goes up here and it plugs into the shunt. Um, so that's pretty much it for the wiring of that. Now uh, you can see, because I have um, solar power coming in, that it's blinking. I don't know if you can see that. If you had shore power, you know, you had your RV plugged in somewhere or whatever, it would, it would do that from the grid. So I'm just going to unhook this wire right here and you'll see it stop blinking. Actually, it's okay, so there it goes. So it's not receiving power anymore, so it stops blinking. All right. So to program the meter, you've got three sets of buttons. The middle ones your amp hours, um, amp hour button, hit that once, gives you the amps, and then the amp hours. I have 400 amp hour capacity on this battery. Um, in order to set that, you push in the middle button, the amp, amp hour button here, and hold it down for three seconds. And I could change it if I needed to, but I have it set. Just use the up or down here, also, but hit the amp hour again. So that's set for 400 amp hours. Again, that's just amps, amp hours. And then volts gives you your voltage. It's uh, capacity that's in the battery right now. It's 13.54 volts. Yeah, you can change your um, that battery there symbol just shows the, the charge on the battery. You can change that by hitting the percent button over here. And you change it up or down to 100%. My battery's at 100% right now. So that's pretty much how you, you set that. And um, that's how I have it set up. So I really like this uh, meter. I'm pretty happy with it.
couple things I've done, small things I've done since I installed the monitor here and the uh, before I get started on the fusing aspect of the video here is I, I did drill a small hole behind the uh, attachment. You can see where that green element is. That's where the uh, positive wire goes to power up the Alili meter. And uh, so I drilled a small hole back there so it wasn't rusting up against the metal hand cart handle. Just for safety's sake. And I also put in a ring terminal on this end of the solar this is the negative solar terminal comes in to the P side of this shunt I put a ring terminal on that and I put a ring terminal on the other side the positive solar input to the battery terminal on the other side of the battery bank got to go up to my charge controller here uh, just to make that more of a substantial connection And you can see here I'm down to 131.4 volts, which is shows the amp hours here of 368.3 out of 400. So I did charged up overnight a uh, Jeep battery that I just bought. I wanted to top that off. And we have had rain for the last couple days, so um, it will charge up here slowly, but uh, it's going to take a little while. Let's turn the solar back on. We don't have much sun today. All right, this next portion of the uh, video is going to be on the circuit breakers that uh, you install between the solar panels and the charge controller and the charge controller to the battery bank. I originally got two of these 40 amp. They were 40 amp um, fuses. They're inline uh, circuit breaker fuse, and I uh, purchased two that were 40 amps. I uh, realized later on that the uh, charge controller, the from the solar panels to the charge controller, is supposed to be 30 amp because it's a 30 amp charge controller um, maximum. So you want to put a 30 amp fuse in there. So um, as it turned out, the original circuit breaker that I got, the R Kirk, R K U R C K, 40 amp breaker that I got off of Amazon, only one of those. Only one of those actually worked. Um, one, the, uh, the fuse was broken and it did not function. So I had to buy another one anyway. So I ended up buying another one of these. But I got a different brand this time. I got the, uh, looking it up here, Stedion. S-T-E-T-I-O-N. Stedion Car Audio 30 Amp Breaker. So... This is going to go between the solar panels and the charge controller. This one came with an Allen wrench, which the other one didn't. Um, so if I was to recommend one uh, right now, it's going to be the Stetion S-T-E-T-I-O-N. S-T-E-T-I-O-N car audio 30 amp breaker off of Amazon. I think it was like, let's say like 10 bucks, uh, $14.59, Amazon Prime. Alright, so what you want to do first is um, strip your uh, wire that comes in from the solar panel. This is a 10 gauge wire that comes down. This is a positive lead from my solar panel. Uh, you want to make sure that um, while you do this you cover up the uh, panel so that it doesn't, it's not taking any electricity to, for a safety measure for shock. You want to make sure that the panels are covered for this step. So what I'm going to do is uh, I pre-put the uh, rubber gasket and the uh, barrel protector that goes over the one end of the uh, circuit breaker on the wire. It's going to go on just like that. The fat side facing down, the wide side. And we're going to strip that wire about a quarter of an inch on the end. Now we're going to install the uh, circuit breaker of a have it up here right where uh, I'm going to want it connected it to my charge controller. It does not come with uh, screws, so you're going to want to have some screws that a size appropriately fit. You're going to fit it. I positioned it up here out of the rain and moisture kind of up near the charge controller. 
I've already pre-cut the wires and stripped them. But just gonna screw that down nice and tight. This comes with a uh, Allen wrench, which the other one did not. Um, what you want to do is back these nuts out on the on the on the nut and take your, your gauge wire here. This is 10 gauge. Go ahead and just round it out. Get right in there. Clamp them down. down nice and tight and I'm going to take my nut and I'm just going to screw that on there. It's on there nice and tight. You can do that on both sides. Make sure you position your gasket so the fat side of your gasket is facing the end of your wire here. So when you want to do it, so that it's nice and watertight. And we're just going to bring that up there, screw it in tight. And take the barrel. Screw that down. Tight. Alright, so this next video is going to be the uh, 40 amp fuse or circuit break that's going to go from the charge controller down to the battery bank. Uh, this Windy Nation P30L charge controller takes a 30 amp fuse from the solar panels to the charge controller because it's a 30 amp charge controller. And then it specifies it wants a 40 amp fuse from the charge controller to the battery bank. So, next we're going to start a uh, fuse in line. Um, I'm going to cut, I'm gonna, first of all figure out where I'm going to put my fuse down here, probably somewhere on this post. Um, and I'm going to cut the wires appropriately and we'll, we'll uh, strip those wires. Alright, so I think I decided I'm going to put my, uh, my fuse right up here. My circuit breaker is going to go right here. So I'm going to just affix that there and then uh, strip the wires, cut them to appropriate length and uh, run it to my charge controller. Okay, so again, this doesn't come with any uh, screws for the uh, fuse, so you got to have some some screws that are kind of small to fit this. But we're gonna put it right about there. Challenge with the uh, lighting today to try to stay out of the way of the camera to keep the lighting good. So that's on there pretty good. Hopefully you can see that. Just screwing it in. So that's going to take my positive wire, which is this one from the battery battery bank. Um, so I'm going to cut this positive wire, and it's going to go in line with that. So to bring it up here a little bit. Bring it up there. Kind of like that. Okay, to do this next step, I'm going to unhook both the uh, positive and negative wires from the battery bank to the charge controller because I don't want those hooked up. I'm going to strip that, cut that wire and strip it right about there where I have it pinched off. Let's get my wire strippers. Alright, so this is the positive wire. I'm going to cut it right here. And I'm going to strip this out there. And I strip the other end coming from the battery bank. You want your barrel protector to go on here, and then your uh, 
washer wants to be fat end wants to be towards the end of the wire like so we'll go ahead and connect that and tight and then you just take your washer and your barrel protector to make it nice and watertight all right so right now I have the uh, solar panel unhooked. I have the circuit breakers set to off so I can go ahead and reattach my battery bank here so that we can attach the solar. Make sure you attach the power from the battery bank before you do your uh, apply solar to the charge controller otherwise you can do like main fry your, your unit which I'm going to take this positive wire that goes to my positive side of the battery terminal. I'm going to put it in. Alright. Oops. There we go. Alright, so it's all connected. I just have to throw the switches. Fuses and circuit breakers for my solar panels now and for my charge controller to the battery bank. So what I'm going to do is you want to apply power to the charge controller first on the battery bank. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that fuse and it should light up here. There it goes. Circuit breaker with the solar. It's kind of a cloudy day but we're going to go ahead and throw this and you'll be able to see I think some solar power coming into the charge controller. And then through that, it takes a few minutes for that to light up. But you will see that incoming start to blink from the solar panel. You can see that it has some solar coming in. So that's it. That's the uh, fusing portion of the uh, portable solar generator. You want a fuse between your solar panels coming into the charge controller and a fuse going down to your battery bank from the charge controller. It's a 30 amp fuse. I have three 5 amp solar panels coming down. This is a potential of 15 amps. I can put another one easily up there. Um, but I have three, and then I have a uh, 40 amp fuse from the charge controller down to the battery terminal, which is what the P30L controller suggested. Alright, for uh, the time being, this is going to conclude my video for the battery solar monitor, Alili QWork battery monitor that I have, um, and my portable solar generator here. All hooked up with the PL P30L Windy Nation charge controller and the uh, fusing that I have from the solar and from the charge controller down to the battery bank. And um, so this is it. Yeah, this is my portable solar generator. I can uh, unhook the charge controller, take this into the house, take it wherever I need to to uh, get 400 amps amp hours of uh, power. So it's pretty happy with the um, monitors that I've chosen. This Alili battery monitor worked great for like an RV or some kind of application like that. Um, it blinks when it's receiving power. It has a little charge indicator. It shows an up or down arrow depending on whether more charges coming in or going out. Um, it's a good little meter got 368.6 amp hours out of 400 on there right now the 13.19 volts it should match up here pretty much 13.3 volts on the charge controller really like this charge controller too uh, by Windy Nation I went and bought another one because I broke the other one it's my fault but uh, makes a great charge controller these little inline uh, circuit breakers or fuses work great for this application. I can just throw the, the switch to turn off the solar or the uh, battery bank. It's pretty handy. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with it. One thing I didn't go over, uh, which I might do a separate video later on, but this uh, I picked up one of these kilowatt, the kilowatt P3. Basically what it allows you to do, you can plug this into your um, household appliances. It'll tell you how many watts it draws. 
like even a, a circuit strip if you have a bunch of TVs or radios or whatever hook up to a, a, a strip power strip will tell you how many watts are coming into it um, kind of demonstrate that actually if I turn this on I have this hooked up right now to the uh, to a charger on my power strip here but it shows it's got coming in 124 volts of power and then it'll show how many amps it's drawing like if I was to plug something in there it would it would uh, show how many amps are drawing so 0 0.20 amps right now because there's really nothing hooked up to it again it shows the volts how many watts is getting pulled 13 watts right now probably because of the uh, charger I have hooked up there but yeah so it's a pretty handy little device because it tells you you don't want to exceed the amps um, of your inverter this inverter um, you don't want to exceed the amperage or the you know watts on the it's a you know it's a 1500 watt inverter you don't want to exceed that and I forget how many amps but um, yeah this little meter gives you a good idea of what's coming in and going out so yeah, that's my uh, solar setup here at the house got three panels on the roof here just getting out of some rainy weather